Roswell in 1947. Well, let's keep in mind, Cheryl, they started it. They put out that press release on Tuesday, July 8, 1947, claiming they actually captured a flying saucer. They claimed that. We're going to end it. You are the co-founder of the world-famous UFO Museum in Roswell. What's the present status and any new exciting exhibits there? I know you speak throughout the year. There are things planned throughout the 75th year. What's coming up? Well, first of all, we're commemorating the 75th anniversary for the entire year. We're not just doing it over the uh, festival, which we annually celebrate. We commemorate the 1947 each 4th of July weekend. But we will also have festival that is July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We have redesigned all the exhibits throughout the museum. They are all interactive. You actually put a button that you look at a monitor, you see the actual witnesses, more than just a picture on the wall, you hear their eyewitness testimony. We have the largest UFO library in the world. We have a research center that houses over 150,000 cases from all over the world. And our museum truly is the mecca for the entire UFO and UAP phenomena. So please come and see us. With this milestone year for Roswell, what do you think were the final chapter on this most famous of all UFO cases and how it fits into the big picture? Again, we're talking the granddaddy of all UFO cases. If you're still Roswell, you found the UFO mystery overnight. I'm amazed, like, uh, when you hear former President Bill Clinton talk about, well, I tried to look at the documents, I demanded to see the documents. Well, don't you want to handle the wreckage? Don't you want to see the, the bodies? Don't you want to actually see the remains? And so that is the final chapter, that until the government more than just says that it happened, more than just tells us that the witnesses were telling the truth, we demand to see the actual proof, and we demand to see, once and for all, that material that was not made here on planet Earth. Don, where can people find out more about your investigative, ongoing work about Roswell, your new book, and where can they find out more about the 75th anniversary? Well, certainly we're on uh, Facebook, it's by Donald Raymond Smith, and also the International UFO Museum and Research Center, and the books are all available at Barnes and & Noble, and, and certainly at Amazon. Roswell will continue to be the granddaddy of all UFO cases for one and one main reason, because it's the one case and the only case that can prove the UFO phenomenon within a heartbeat, overnight. And it's just a matter of them providing the physical evidence that proved to them back in 1947 that we are not alone. Thank you so much, Don, for bringing us up to date on everything that's happening in Roswell, the anniversary, and for all of your new information on your ongoing case at Far From Cold. Far From Cold, very proactive, and we always know that whenever we have anything late-breaking important to present, we can come to Coast to Coast and have uh, an immediate audience. Thank you. Right. So there you go, George. There's nothing like holding the evidence in your hand and seeing it with your own eyes, if you can. It's just great to have somebody like Don Schmidt in the field of ufology, Cheryl, doing what he does, what he's done over the years. He mentioned our friend Kevin Randall, who appears on uh, the week, uh, Thursdays and Fridays, giving us UFO reports. These are dedicated people, aren't they? They really are, and it's almost a thankless job, because... As you know, and as he referred to, there's so much ridicule and demonization of the people throughout the decades that they're trying to bring things forward, especially our uh, dear late friend, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who relentless, who was just, uh, just such a strong force. He never wavered. He continued to express his views and to share his information that he believed that we had been visited and that we were not alone and that those uh, UFOs were real. Not every case, of course, but he, he was a staunch supporter of, uh, of John work as well. I remember Edgar Mitchell telling me directly when I asked him, I said, Edgar, have you ever seen a UFO? And he said, no, I have not. But I've been told by people in government, high up in government, that were being visited and they exist 
and that's good enough for me. And he was so stern about that, Cheryl. I'll never forget it. It was. He actually said that he felt disclosure was happening way back in uh, as early as uh, 2008 in countries around the world in various ways. And he said that he did not feel that the government, the president, had to come out on the White House lawn and officially anoint that particular announcement to have real disclosure. So I guess the word disclosure has many definitions depending on Who's, uh, who's Have you talked at all with our friend Stephen Bassett from the Paradigm Research Group? Yes, we spoke uh, just a few weeks ago. Yes, he's hard at work, and he, as always, uh, works hard to make sure that folks see he's a 24-7 robot, but uh, he's all excited about things that may happen in the future, and he's always optimistic. He sure was, and I, I tell a little joke about Steve Bassett because he's so good at speaking that whenever I do a radio show, I can leave for an hour and, and come back and answer his question because he's still going. <laughs> he will. Uh, he's, he's like the Energizer Bunny. He's never at a loss for words. And uh, I, I, I don't know anyone who, who could possibly work any harder than he's worked for decades, working with him all of those years in the X conferences and the Citizen Hearing on Disclosure. Um, you know, he's, he's just amazing. And when we come back, Carol, we're going to do open lines. You and me will take turns answering whatever the open lines discussion might be. Sign up now for Coast Zone, our free email newsletter. Get it today at coasttocoastam.com. <laughs> and nobody feels good about themselves after doing that. A couple years ago, this melted plumber at Mike Diamond started offering drain on salvages for $99. Bubba's everywhere sat out their pocket donuts and took notice. Drain stoppage offers came out of the woodwork like cockroaches. One of these followers has three different stoppage prices. Depending on the flyer or phone book you pick up, get the same order won't even quote you a price over the phone. Yes, yeah, no good plumbing headquarters. We're asking ourselves if imitation is truly the greatest form of flattery. You might ask yourself if Bubba's price slashing is worth the risk. You know our plumbers smell good, but did you also know we're relentlessly background checked and drug testers? Not only we know we license, but every single technician is registered with the state of California. I got a bucket of soap and a juice of deodorant that Bubba can't say that. My diamond unstock drains for 99 bucks. Find out more at thesnowgoodplumber.com. Then call us at 1 800 446 Mike. Contractor license number 399 This is Mike Diamond, and I guarantee my plumber will show up on time and smell good, or your house call is free. If you're replacing your floors or getting new windows, you would never get just one bid. Why would you rely on a single bid when it comes to financing or refinancing your home? HMS Capital is the only lender I know that encourages you to apply with multiple lenders. Because by applying with multiple lenders, you'll end up with a lower interest rate, you'll save money, let them duke it out. You're going to be the winner. HMS Capital is confident they can get you the best deal. And it's no more work to do two or more loan applications than one. It's the same application. And just calling for a rate isn't nearly enough. You have to apply. Apply with HMS Capital and as many other lenders as you want. I've done two mortgages with HMS Capital, so it's easy for me to recommend them. It's free to apply, and there's never an appraisal fee or a credit report fee. Call 833-255-5698. Visit hmscapital.com. KFI and KOST HD2, Los Angeles, Orange County. Happy Friday. You made it through the week. It's time for your morning wake-up call. 
Harper Jones Lee. Welcome to a Friday. I am going to give you a warning right now. I wanted to play an April Fool's joke on you. I really did. Anyway, I need to be the adult in the room. So I've decided instead, a little later this morning, I am going to give you some prank ideas that you can play on your co-workers or your family members today. So no pranks on Wake Up Call, but uh, I'm going to be your enabler so that you can screw around with other people today. Just beware, it is April 1st. So if something seems, if something doesn't pass the sniff test in your life, or if somebody does something a little weird, or asks you to do a little something weird, probably messing with you. Here's what's happening on your wake-up call. Ukrainian authorities say Russian troops have abandoned the contaminated Chernobyl nuclear site. At 5.05, I want to ask Aaron to church you, is it because they're withdrawing, or is this just Russia again trying to cover up something because maybe it's planned in the work? like it had hoped. Is it going to say, oh, no, 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 we're not withdrawing, we're just repositioning those troops. We'll find out when we chat with Aaron in a second. The producer of the Oscars went on Good Morning America and said even he at first thought when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, it was just part of a planned bit. And a little later in the show, I'll tell you why Skippy is recalling thousands of jars of peanut butter. It's all because of concerns that the peanut butter could be contaminated. So I'll give you those details a little bit later in your biz bites this morning. Let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. Ukrainian authorities say Russian troops have abandoned the contaminated Chernobyl nuclear site. They say the troops were exposed to radiation while they were digging trenches at the site of the world's worst nuclear accident. An international atomic watchdog has not verified that claim. That's one more thing I want to talk to Aaron about. What about the morale? What about if you were one of those Russian troops who apparently thought they were just going on a training mission or something like that when the war started six weeks ago? All of a sudden, now you've been assigned to dig trenches at Chernobyl and you find out that you've been exposed to radiation? That if the morale is down and then that comes out, that's not good. The war in Ukraine has entered its sixth week, and ABC's Mona Kosarovsky says Ukraine may have scored a first in its struggle to resist the Russian invaders. Russia claims Ukrainian forces have attacked a fuel depot across the border inside Russia. If confirmed, it would be the first Ukrainian airstrike on Russian soil since the war started. The Russian governor says the Ukrainian air site airstrike set the depot on fire and hurt two people. A body has been found in Griffith Park. The L.A. Fire Department was called last night about 7 to help park rangers in recovering the body. Officials say it was found near the old L.A. Zoo. Investigators say they're trying to figure out how some gas cylinders exploded at an industrial park in Montclair. Montclair Fire Battalion Chief Ryan Deere says the explosion was violent. There's approximately 100 uh, to 200 cylinders on the property. Um, it's difficult to know the contents of each. Deere says they got on scene just after 9 yesterday morning and were able to knock down the flames pretty quickly. He says at least four people were injured and for a few hours had to evacuate the surrounding neighborhood. In Montclair, Steve Gregory, KFI News. Two people have been arrested for allegedly robbing a Louis Vuitton store on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. This happened yesterday afternoon about 2. Cops say the security guard was hurt and anyone with information is urged to contact the Beverly Hills Police Department. Well, a law firm representing most law enforcement agencies in the state says two years of calls to defund the police and scared off diverse and qualified recruits. Why do I want to go into that profession at this point? It's in some ways a no-thanks business. One of the firm's law partners in L.A., Jeff Delvin, says many new laws and reforms are long overdue. But some of the folks who are wanting to see reforms in policing is working against that in some ways. We're not getting the best, the brightest. Uh, candidates necessarily because there's a lot of people just saying there's too much at stake to go into that profession. However, he says law enforcement's positive image is returning. And as reforms become more accepted over time, quality recruits should return to the profession. In L.A., Corbin Carson, KFI News. And the producer of the Oscars says she first thought when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, it was part of a planned bit. Will Packer tells ABC the LAPD came to his office and spoke with Rock. But they said, you know, would you like us to take any action? And he said no. Now, Packer says he did not speak to Will Smith directly on the night of the Oscars. And we're going to get into that at 520 with ABC's Jason Nathanson.
All right, we come back, we'll talk with Aaron Katursky about Russia saying it's leaving the Chernobyl nuclear site. Why? Why exactly? Was it have to, did it have to do with the truth? Did it have to do with repositioning? Or did it have to do with Russia just didn't do so well in that area and decided, you know what, best to cut our losses. That's coming up in just a few minutes. TGIF right back at you, Nick Pagliocchini. Let's check the 14. <laughs> Gonna be busy first thing this morning as you're making your way southbound. Coming away from the merge of Pear Blossom Highway through the Acton area, and that remains busy for you too. About Escondido Canyon for the southbound on the 14, at least for the moment, not gonna be bad for you again until you get a little bit closer to the Cassaic area and uh, Santa Clarita. Uh, looks like from Golden Valley Road or actually before at 14 southbound, gonna be kind of light and passy here and there for you as you make your way ahead into the New Hall Pass toward the 5. Got an update on something slowing down your drive. Time to 15 myself on keyword is SoCal traffic or KFI traffic, either will work. As you make your way uh, southbound along the 101 out of the Sherman Oaks area, off the 405, heading into downtown LA to the 110. That's about 13 to 15 minutes so far for your morning drive. What's on side of the 105, uh, leaving Norwalk from the 605, all the way toward El Segundo, Pulvita Boulevard, and LAX, uh, 19 to 22 minutes for you there. As you make your way along the 110 northbound, coming out of South LA, from the 105 into downtown to the 10, looks to be about, oh, let's say, 7 minutes to the drive, and about 5 more if you're continuing toward the 5. KFI in the sky helps get there faster. I'm Nick Pagliocchini. 506 on your wake-up call, Aaron Katursky, good morning to you. So Russia says it is leaving the Chernobyl nuclear site. Why? Well, we think it's probably part of the, of the repositioning of their forces. The U.S. says there's no evidence that this is due to the, any sickness or radiation poisoning, as, as has been rumored. There's, there's been a number of reports floating around out there. But the, the U.S. says they're not sure that a bunch of troops have been sick. More likely that they're just, you know, repositioning to go elsewhere. But on their way out, the Ukrainians have said they ransacked uh, parts of Chernobyl, looted a hotel, uh, stole things from the power plant. Uh, just not a great, not a great look. No, not at all. And going back to those rumors that some of the uh, Russian soldiers had, you know, had radiation exposure. I was just thinking about the morale, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, is we keep hearing about the morale with the Russian troops, and whether or not this is, is the case, you know, did, going clear back to the very beginning, six weeks ago, the reports that some of them didn't even know that they were going to war. They just thought they were doing yeah. training exercises. And to think that those same troops might have been the ones who possibly were exposed to radiation, those troops, uh, or those reports then of those troops' morale being low, you could see why. Oh, well, sure. Uh, and, and, you know, to say nothing of the frostbite, of the lack of food, uh, we, we heard from uh, U.S. officials that, uh, that they, they were sabotaging vehicles, they, they were ignoring orders uh, in, in some cases, and as they retreated, not necessarily from Chernobyl, but we know from Irpin and, you know, areas more uh, uh, around Kiev, that you know the, the Ukrainians are pursuing. They're not just letting them go. They're 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 uh, firing on those positions and trying to take back as much ground as possible. And when it comes to this repositioning idea, we know that you know that uh, that Russia was now focusing more kind of on the Donbas region and thinking, okay, maybe that's going to be what our win is going to be in this. We will just reposition all of those troops there. Is are the ones that were in Chernobyl going to that area? Well, we, um, in some cases, that's the belief. Although they don't have any, you know, uh, assurance as to where they're, you know, where they're going, but they believe that uh, the, the intention would be to move the east, try to pinch the, the Ukrainian forces that are fighting in that area, and then try to secure uh, turf in the Donbass and then down down south. The, um, the negotiations aimed at ending the war are going to be resumed today by video link uh, as Ukrainian forces are making more advances on the ground. Uh, but we still think the Russians are going to hold firm on, on those territorial demands. And just real quickly before you go, when it comes to those peace talks, um, yeah. with Russia saying, hey, yeah, we are going to reduce the attacks that we have on places like Kiev, and, they, you know, and, and we will go and, what did, what would, would it in trust, or that if we reduce the selling or something like that, it'll help ensure the trust or something during these peace talks. Yet, if you ask the Ukrainians, the, there was no reduction. It just kept going, even while those exact peace talks were going on. Are the Ukrainians finding it hard to believe what the Russians are saying? Oh, I, I, I don't think there's a, any illusion about what 
you know, the Russians are up to or capable of, that, you know, even Zelensky put it this way, like, we're not naive, uh, that, you know, they know that the Russians aren't necessarily to be taken at their word. And, and I think that's part of the reason why Zelensky has been pushing for a, a meeting with, with Vladimir Putin, you know, to get something signed and, and hopefully at that level it would be firm. But we don't think there's any breakthrough expected today on that. And um, you're right, the, the Ukrainians have been bombarding Kyiv and the surrounding areas, even as they said they'd reduce military activity. Uh, uh, just last night there was, there was a, a strike pretty close to our position in Kyiv. And um, my colleagues had a look at it. They said, you know, after a while, the smoke just dissipated, and, and it was almost as, as if nothing happened. So there was a lot of curiosity about what kind of weapon may have been used. Um, and, and so there's a ton of fight left, um, even though we all want to have, you know, hope in these, in these peace talks. Right. All right, Aaron, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you Monday. Good, Good weekend, Jen. Thanks. Thanks. See you later. Um, that's got to be so hard. It, uh... I was thinking about this from President Zelensky's side. And when I looked at what does he tell his people? So he's got to tell them, hey, we've got peace talks going on. So what I'm saying is he's got to be a leader, a leader that gives hope to his people. But he also has to be the leader who says, hey, we've got peace talks going on, and this is great, and we are hoping that something good happens here. By the way, duck and cover if you're in Kyiv, because even though they've said, we'll reduce it, that is, you know, remains to be seen. What an awful place to try and be in. How do you keep the spirits of your people high? And how do you keep the resiliency up? And how do you keep that fight up when everything that you think you're doing is being met with either, what, lies? Could you call them that? or it's being met with, um, everything that you're being met with is contrary to what you're being told. I mean, that, that would just be a difficult position if you're the leader, how to balance that. Get back to some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A police officer in Inglewood has been shot in the Lenox area. The LA Sheriff's Department says the officer was helping a possible domestic violence victim retrieve some property yesterday. A man came up, shot the officer several times and then drove off. The officer was listed in stable condition at the hospital. We hear that all the time, that the domestic violence situations are usually the ones that I feel like the cops end up getting shot the most or they end up getting hurt the most. It's that they are the most volatile kind of everyday situations that our police officers and sheriff's deputies have to deal with. Taxpayers can donate this year to help provide more training for police officers dealing with people in mental health crisis. The National Alliance on Mental Health California CEO Jessica Cruz says funding provides de-escalation and crisis intervention training that's taught by officers. It's helping us also provide peer-to-peer -peer officer support groups to help officers and their families also um, get the support that they need if they are challenged with some sort of a mental health crisis. Cruz says 25% of deaths and 40% of non-fatal police shootings since 2015 involved people with a mental health condition. She says these situations threaten the officer, the person in distress, and their families. Five men have agreed to plead guilty to running an illegal sports gambling operation. The ring was led by a former pitcher from the Oakland A's minor league system who lives in Newport Beach. Wayne Nix has admitted to his professional sports contacts he used to build the gambling business. His clients it included professional athletes. I can't wait till that little black book comes out. LA County's Guaranteed Income Pilot Program is taking applications. People have been lining up to put their names into the hat to be selected. This man says the money would allow him to start a commercial cleaning business. We would free up my economic opportunity for our dinner with bills, no housing stability and things of that nature. Uh, definitely food. 1,000 people will be randomly chosen to get $1,000 a month for three years. The deadline to apply is April 13th. Requirements include having a household income less than $56,000 for a single person or $96,000 for a family of four. Blake Trolley, KFI News. LA County DA Gascon says he's created a new human trafficking court to treat people forced into sex trade as victims and not criminals. This is not a cookie cutter approach where everyone is going to be sort of put over in a, in a single box. Each individual, whether it's a juvenile or whether it's an adult, is going to be assessed based on their needs. 
Gaffron says the diversion program will get people the help they need and move them out of the sex trade cycle. All right, when we come back, we are going to talk with ABC's Jason Nathanson. So, you've got the producer now of the Oscar saying, we did not know, we thought possibly that Will Smith and Chris Rock, the Slapgate, was a bit. And then they went, oh wait, what, 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 that's not a bit? But I want to get into that. Did the Academy ask Will Smith to leave or not? Did Chris Rock, or is Chris Rock, going to take the high ground on this one? Even though so far he has said, you know, no, uh, no plans to get Will Smith into any trouble. Apparently, whether or not Chris Rock wanted it, the LAPD might have been on standby. There is so much to get into this. Lots more behind the scenes that we're learning this morning. So we'll talk with Jason Nathanson about Slapgate in just a second. Right now, let's talk about or talk with Nick about oh, that darn ninety-one. <laughs> Second general is going to be light and happy for you, but it's definitely busy as you make your way through Corona coming off the 15 as you make your way past Green River. In fact, look at that as you drive time out of downtown Riverside as you uh, continue to start Anaheim and Fullerton. Five, about 38 to 40 minutes for your drive so far this morning, so a little bit lighter than normal, but definitely starting to see those delays. As you make your way along the 57 Southtown, coming out of the uh, Pomona area from as far back as Temple, uh, looks pretty good all the way to Orange County, but checking your drive time looks like it's already going to be about 14 to 16 minutes for the drive. Okay, if I'm this guy, helps you to faster, I make polio TV. Joining us today, Scott Painter, CEO and co-founder of Autonomy. It's a new company. It's right here in L.A. that offers car subscriptions. The whole idea behind a subscription was being able to simplify the transaction and make it easier for the customer. There is no better way to get into a Tesla Model 3 than the autonomous Buying a car also seems so cumbersome. This seems to be a super easy way to get you into the Tesla Model 3. You do the entire thing on your phone. You're not buying a car. You are saying, I want to use the car. We own the car. We manage. It's all the tags, the titles, the registration, all the new issues covered. So this is a very real way to get access to flexible mobility without having to go through the headaches of ownership and buying okay. the car and the negotiation that so often goes along with it. He makes it this whole process because you see literally minutes of you on your phone. What are the steps and how is it so quick? You simply go to autonomy.com, install the app, you simply give us your driver's license and that digital form of payment, and you get either the car delivered to you or you go and pick it up. I'm excited about it. Sponsored by all of this. Baby Marty Show, pretty good. All safe. Better protection costs for a whole lot less. Visit allsafe.com or call an agent for a quote today. This is Chris Collinsworth. Here's what's trending on the iHeart Sports Network. Presented by Draftkick. The Lakers wrapped up their road trip with a loss of the third. Russell Westbrook had a team high 24 points. But back on the outside, looking in with the third holding his tiebreaker for the final spot in the play. The Clippers couldn't close out the rules of our time and take their spot in the play. And the Rams bolstered their defense by inking Pro Bowl linebacker Bobby Bradley to a five-year deal. I'm a few Download the DraftKings app and use code SPORTS to get a free shot at millions of dollars and up for grabs this week. I know the people are trying to and I keep it close to the time. So I see something going on like I don't want to Your class is important. No matter what your age or stage, you know you're busy. That's why you can donate your car to Toy for Kids right now. Toy for Kids offers hassle for the dress up for every donor. Save no, 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 the online forms at cars They're sitting somewhere over the very next day to throw away your old or unusable right, car. Cars for Kids is the quickest and fastest way to get rid of your car. So do it your needs without losing any time from your schedule. Just go to carsforkids.org today and remember, that's cars with a K. The True Crime Podcast. What happened to Sandy Beal investigates the alarming death of a young woman who dreamed of a career in law enforcement. Journalist Melissa Delson untangles the mystery at the heart of the investigation, revealing a troubling pattern that is so close to the case. I'll have them go look at it. I will refer out to places I should list. Listen to what happened to Sandy Beal on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast.
He won in the first 40,000 fans at Dodger Stadium Saturday, April 16th, when the Dodgers host the Reds at 7 tracks, and your team led to the Dodger baseball bobblehead of Murray Whitt, sponsored by Bank of America. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Want to make sure your recycling actually gets recycled? Californians are recycling smarter with tips on how to empty, dry, and sort properly. Visit iRecyclesmart.com to take your recycling to the next level. That's iRecyclesmart.com. Do your part. Recycle smart. Hi, this is Dean Sharp, the house whisperer. Uh, I've spent my career designing and building beautiful homes. I'm here on KFI to help you transform your house into a more beautiful home. And while we're at it, build yourself a more beautiful life. Hi, this is Dean Sharp, the house whisperer. Tomorrow morning, on KFI. Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee, and these are some of the top.